gentlemen, we'll call this February meeting of the Carroll County Board of License Commissioners to order. Welcome everybody. We usually begin our meetings as has been the tradition for many years with the pledge to the flag and observe a moment of silence, memory of all those who have great sacrifice for this country. It's strictly voluntary. With that, Mr. Barnhart, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You all may be seated. This time I would ask, but before I ask Mr. Dixon to call our first case, welcome to our new appointee as a alternate to this board, Ms. Brooke Haggerty. Thank you. Nice to have you. With that, Mr. Dixon, will you call our first case, number 6432, please? All right, case 6432, an application for the transfer of a Class B.C. beer, wine, and liquor license with catering to a new corporate entity and a change of licensees B and C to be issued to Sylvia M. Cor Nor, uh, Kenny R. Russo, and Jesse S. McPherson for the use of Playball, Maryland, Eldersburg. LLC trading as Glory Days Grill, 1348 Liberty Road, Eldersburg, Maryland, 21784 in Election District 5. In the file of this matter, we have the following documents. A response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Lisa Staley Health Department. With the box checked, the above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There is a January 27th, 2023 notice of public hearing for this case. There is a January 20th, 2023 notice of public hearing for this case. There is a response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Jay Voigt, Zoning Administrator. The, with the box checked, the above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There is a response to Joe Vance's request from Belinda Gasell, Collections Office. With the box checked, the above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. Joe Vance sent a December 16, 2022 letter to Sylvia Knorr, Kenny Russo, and Jesse McPherson. There is a December 12, 2022 letter from Sue Cook, Senior Paralegal, to the Board of License Commissioners. And it includes an application, character references, Criminal background information, MVA record, workman's comp records, assignment and assumption agreement, asset purchase, purchase agreement, a menu, a floor plan, a plot plan, <coughs> SDAT information, corporate minutes, financial information, other licensed establishments, bulk transfer app. I would ask that the uh, file be entered into evidence. Articles of organization. We'll accept that into evidence. This time I would ask all those of you who intend to testify in this case, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in by Ms. Vance. 
Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You may be seated. With that, Ms. <clears throat> Lindy, would like to continue? Does the light go off when it's on, or does it stay red? It stays red. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board and staff. Thank you so much for having us before you today. As Mr. Dixon has indicated, we have filed a, a transfer application with this board. And by way of background, if I could, um, Glory Days was founded many years ago by an individual whose brother has decided he wants to get into the business. Ms. Linda, if, if you would be more comfortable seated. Oh, thank you, sir. And his, his brother has decided that he wants to go into the business with him. So basically, the two brothers are now going to be the upstream owners of everything. With me today, in addition to Ms. Knorr, who I know you know because she's the current resident licensee and has agreed to continue to serve on behalf of the incoming licensees, I have Kenny Russo and Jesse McPherson, both of whom are very experienced restaurant operators who have known each other for more than 20 years. Um, they go back to working together in Carabas and probably some other ventures as well. Um, Kenny is in charge of, he's upstream from the restaurant. He's not the manager. Our restaurant manager is here today and we'll bring her forward in just a few minutes. But she reports to him and he reports to Jesse. So um, it's, it's a very hands-on operation. Before I call my witnesses, if I could please provide the board with some information regarding how the business is run, particularly as to how it is run regarding the sale of alcoholic beverages. This unit runs about 19% alcohol, 81% food sales. As the chair knows, this is truly a restaurant. Um, I happen to have grandchildren that love glory days because they love the dirt. And I love the fact that there's a kid's menu and there are, the staff is always accommodating in that they understand when you're there with a three-year-old and a seven-year-old, they really need their stuff before I get mine. And it's, it's always nice to see. But in terms of the alcohol service, my clients take this very, very seriously. We have a one-bite policy. If a server sells to an underaged individual, they are terminated. It doesn't matter what the reason is. There are no excuses. The policy is enhanced, however, because if a unit has two sales, the managing partner, the manager of the unit, is also terminated. That sends a message loud and clear to the staff that you'd better do your job because if you don't, you're not going to have a job to do. So with that, if I could please, did you want to give these to them? Or did no. You? Okay. okay. If I could approach, please. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> First is the alcohol training synopsis for servers and bartenders. This is just kind of an abbreviation of everything that they do and have to do. One of the things that Glory Days has are um, Thank you. congratulations. Are trainers that are certified. So there's there's, their intent is to train as many people at, at all times, and they have regular staff meetings at which all personnel are continuously reminded about the importance of making sure that you're not serving somebody who is intoxicated or not serving somebody who is underage. trying to get my steps in today. <laughs> <laughs> this is their alcohol policy. Every employee is required to sign this. The serve safe certification you just gave out, there's, there's three names. We have more. We just there's a sample. Right. Exactly. Thank, thank you. And they use both serve safe and tips. A checking ID guide. And if I could please have all of these moved to the, to the record as 
applicants' exhibits. I would greatly appreciate it. I don't care if it's collectively or individually. Whatever is easiest for the board. And just a hard Xeroxed copy of, of the menu. And as I'm sure the board is aware, at all times. Who changed the menu? <laughs> <laughs> no Who changed yet. the menu? It changes seasonally based upon availability. Um, and supply chain issues these days. <coughs> Oh, good. Thank you. So with that, if I can make a few other proffers. Um, Jesse. Let me just show this to you. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Jesse McPherson, Kenny Russo, and, uh, and Sylvia Michelle Noor all made representations in their application. And I would proffer to the board that all of the um, representations that they made in the application are still true and accurate as they appear before you today. There have been no changes in addresses, in violation history, um, or if any other matter in that, in that regard. Um, my, my clients, and the, license, the prospective licensees are all familiar with the board's rules and regulations. They understand that if a violation occurs, even if they're not on the premises, they have to be held accountable to this board and they need to appear before you. Um, my clients take this all very seriously. Um, as part of the acquisition of the glory days in Maryland and Virginia and in West Virginia, We've had a number of hearings, and some of which, for instance, Ellicott City, um, was a combination of virtual and in person. My clients take this so seriously that even in spite of the fact that Mr. McPherson lives in Florida, he came to Maryland for that hearing. They understand that the selling of alcohol is a privilege and while it's only, it's less than 20% of their business, it is an integral part of the business, and it helps to make this, the business successful and viable. And with that, Mr. Chairman, if I could call the witnesses. Yes, ma'am, please uh, make sure that they identify themselves or full name and address, please, as they testify. Gladly, thank you. I'm gonna start with you, far end. Okay. Sir, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Ken Russo, 3045 Chickweed Place, Imesville, Maryland. And sir, you heard me make representations and proffers to the board this morning. Are all of those representations and proffers that I made to this board still true and accurate as you appear before the board today? They are. And can you please tell the board a little bit about your history, your background in the hospitality industry? I've been in the restaurant industry since I was 16 years old. And uh, I was before with Glory Days, I was with Carabas for many years in the Maryland region. I you know, worked my way up became a managing partner and then a uh, district manager and then a regional vice president with them before coming over a year and a half ago to join Glory Days with, with Jesse. And sir, have you ever personally been involved in any incident that has given rise to an alcoholic beverage violation before any board in any jurisdiction? No. And you have recently, in connection with the acquisition no. um, by Playball, um, appeared hmm either virtually or in person before hearings throughout this state, correct? Yes. And in um, Baltimore County, Anne Arundel County, Howard County, and Frederick, you have been accepted as a, as a licensee, correct? Correct. And we're in various stages of effectuating those transfers, correct? Yes. And, and you have character witnesses with you here today, sir? I do. And who are they, please? Uh, Doug Morataya. And you also have another witness that has been excused because of, yes. <laughs> because nobody wants to be near him. <laughs> um, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. McPherson could also vouch to your, your good character, correct? Correct. And you've known each other for more than? Uh, 20 years. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions of this witness. Any questions? I have no questions. questions. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the part about um, um, you, you've held licenses in other jurisdictions. Is that Correct. right? Okay, I, I missed which ones. Can you just tell me what they were? Uh, Baltimore. Baltimore County. Baltimore County. Anne Arundel County. Anne Arundel and Howard, Howard County. Howard. And Frederick County. And Frederick County, yeah. Oh. And uh, what restaurants were Baltimore County, Howard County? And These are all glory days. Ah, okay. This is all part of the current acquisition. I see. So, when did you hold these licenses? I was just put on them. Okay. I have held licenses before with Carrazas in Howard County, Montgomery County, Frederick County, and Baltimore, Baltimore County. So you've been on the license of Carabas in the past. I have. And you're not on the licenses now. I am not. You're on several Glory Day licenses in different jurisdictions. Correct. Okay, thanks. Okay. Mr. McPherson, your name and address, please. Jesse McPherson, 5201 uh, Alafia Falls, Lithia, Florida. And Jesse, you heard me make representations and proffers to this board regarding yourself and regarding the information contained in the application. To the best of your knowledge and information and belief, are all of the proffers and representations that I made to this board still true and accurate? Yes. And can you also please tell the board a little bit about your background in the uh, hospitality industry? Uh, 36 years with Brinker uh, for about 10, and then I moved over to Carabas, which is BBI, and then for the last six years with Glory Days down in Florida. And um, just like um, Kenny, you have never personally been involved in any incident that has given rise to an alcoholic beverage violation, is that correct? No. And you also have recently appeared before Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, Howard County, and Frederick County in connection with the play ball acquisition of the Glory Days in Maryland. That's true. And all of those liquor boards have accepted you as a licensee? Yes. And we are in the process of effectuating those license transfers? Yes. And you also have character witnesses with you today? I do. And Doug. Today, sir. Doug. And the gentleman that was also accepted. John and John. And you also heard um, the testimony of, of Kenny, and you guys have known each other forever. Your friends yeah. and business acquaintances. That's true. And he actually came over to Glory Days at your request, correct? That's you hired true. him. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I would have no further questions of the witness. Any questions, this witness? <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you know what the um, vertical licensing, uh, vertical acceptance is in? Yes. You My do. daughter in Florida has just got her vertical license. She's 16, so I know that it's similar. The, do, it's the same. do you know if Glory Days accepts vertical? Yeah, we don't accept them. Don't accept them at all. Yeah. You have signage and everything. Yes. I have a, a question about some of the handouts to council. Um, the alcohol management documents that you provide are very impressive. I think uh, uh, we, we see a, a lot. This might be the best packet I've seen, uh, it's, uh, but I haven't had time to go through it. Can you tell me if there's any information in here that advises your servers that they may be subject to criminal prosecution in this county for serving a minor? Y yeah, they, they know that. Okay, but it's, I don't believe it's, it's in the materials. In the handbook, okay. but not probably in the materials that you have. Okay, thanks. I will take a quick look at that, because I missed that, thanks. So to follow up, like in your packet, it doesn't say that you don't accept vertical IDs. It just shows them and what they look like, or does it Correct. say it in here? Yeah. Somewhere. Okay. Since you've been on all these other licenses in other counties and jurisdictions, have there been any liquor law violations of those <coughs> establishments? Uh, no. Is this a 
purchase of several stores? Yes, sir. All of the stores in Maryland, all of the stores in Virginia, and one unit in West Virginia. 17 total? 22. Oh, I'm sorry, 22. Just uh, briefly remember, uh, what's the chain of command? Who's the number one person? Me. <laughs> and you're in Florida? Yes, sir. So who's your right-hand person? Uh, Gary Cohen is the executive vice president here, and Kenny Russo. They're here in Maryland. Do they encompass all 17 stores? Uh, we have other uh, district managers as well, three other district managers. So there's actually five regional people that are taking care of 22 stores. But who do they report to? You or do you have a, a, a number two man? Uh, it's me and then Gary, Kenny, and then I have other people down in Florida taking care of the Florida stores. Am I, am I answering the question? I'm sorry if I'm not. Well, you're trying to, but I got I, it. I, can't comprehend in other words I, I'm the I'm the president and then I have a vice president here in Maryland and a vice president in Florida and then there are people under them that yeah, actually who's the vice president him uh, he's one he's a regional vice president yes sir yeah, that's what I was getting at. okay sorry no that's all right Sylvia Noor are you currently on the license I am okay um, who is Robert Gardner Sr. and Richard O. Danker? They were the old. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the old regime. They don't like them. <laughs> so, so the three of you are currently on the license. Correct. And those two gentlemen are, want to be off the license. Correct. And I guess there's documentation in the file that, at, you know, of that request. And, um, and you're the resident licensee I am. for Carroll County. And you own 10%. Uh, point to the file. Yes, the file. Uh, okay, and who owns the rest of it? And what percentages? Play ball, play ball Florida, U.S. So each of these uh, gentlemen own 1%, and then Play Ball USA owns the remaining 88%. And I think that's an attachment to the operating agreement. Okay. And Play Ball USA is a limited liability corporation that that owns 88% of Playball USA, I mean Playball Eldersburg? Correct. Okay. Playball Maryland Eldersburg I'm, LLC. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. All right. So uh, technically, Playball Maryland Eldersburg, this is for the use of that LLC. They own 88%, and Playball U USA owns 100% of them. Is that, is that how it works? So Playball, US, uh, Playball Maryland Eldersburg LLC is 12% owned by the individuals on the license and 88% owned by Playball USA LLC. Okay, and that's where you get the 1%? Correct. Okay. Playball USA is a Florida corporation? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me a is. tough one. I believe yes. it yeah. is. Yes. And who are the principals of Playball USA? Uh, myself, Bob Basham, uh, Stephen Jones, and Jim Ulmer. I think there's a few others, right? Yeah, a few other minority other owners. Minorities. But those are the principals. Those are the principals. The major. And Richard Danker. I'm sorry. Yeah. The original Richard Danker is one of the original owners. He is also a principal in the new company as well. New company being Playball. Maryland Eldersburg. Yes. Okay. Play, no, Playball no, USA. USA. He rolled his equity. Yes. yes. He's in part of the new company as well. It was created well. for the purposes of the acquisition. Okay. In Florida. Okay. So if I get this straight, Playball USA owns 88% of Playball Eldersburg. That's correct. Not 100%. Not 100%. 88%. Because the legally, the licensees have to have an ownership interest in Playball right. Maryland Eldersburg LLC. 
I said that, yeah, I said it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I, I think um, our attorney mentioned that all the inspections and permits approvals have been entered. We have been working very diligently to do everything, and we know how, I knew Health had signed off. I was glad to hear that they contacted you because we hadn't received notice that y'all had been contacted yet. Okay. But yeah, I Health believe that everything is in order at this time. I, the only one I'm not sure about <clears throat> yet is permits, but it should be on that left hand page. Uh, it's blank. Yeah, so okay, we'll we'll blank. follow up with them today. <clears throat> Let me just pass this on anyway. Yeah. I'm gonna take a look. <clears throat> I could just readdress the vertical licensing. I'm looking at your finer points page, and it has all vertical license, and under it it says acceptable forms of ID for purchasing alcohol, but they're all. So you do take vertical IDs? No, we do not. We do okay. not take vertical IDs for alcohol. Yeah, so this is, this is used nationwide. In some jurisdictions, for instance, in Virginia, Maryland's got a great vertical ID program. Let me start there. But in jurisdictions like Virginia, if you are 20 years old and 11 months and 29 days, you are issued a vertical ID, but it's valid for six years. But this is what you hand out to your people in Maryland. Kenny? Yeah. We can modify that. Yeah. That's easy. It does include a vertical Maryland license, too. We're not, we're not accepting vertical. Vertical Maryland IDs are valid IDs. Yeah. They, yes, yes. But this so says. Legally, by legal, this they says can. acceptable for purchasing alcohol. And they are. But. Not, 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 nothing wrong with what they're saying. Their policy can be different. But yes, that and is allowed. Right. But that, that by, by legally, was, yes, that's allowed. Point, they hand these out to their Maryland. Agreed, and, which is true. Right. It is a legal form. We just don't it is a legal it. form. It is true. Our policy, our recommendation by the board is not to accept American. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. But yes, that's a, what they're saying is true because it is a legal form. It is ID. true, but to me it would be confusing to the employee to read this form and, and say, okay, this is what I'm taught, but this is what I'm told. We can change that. Yeah, that's a good point. We can modify that. It is a yeah. good point. It can be confusing. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Hopefully the signage throughout the store says the same thing. They have our signage. Ah. Okay. Uh, do you, um, so does someone want to put on the record about the signage that you have in your store, about the vertical ID? Um, we'll call the, the manager with the board's permission okay, since she fine, knows the store better than anybody else in here except perhaps <laughs> Michelle Knorr. Um, is, is the board ready for me to qualify the resident Any license? Any other questions of these two gentlemen? No, no not this time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you Thank may you. call your next witness. Thank you, and y'all can come on up if you want. And as my next witness, Ms. Moore, please state your full name and address for the record, please. Sylvia Michelle Knorr, 6129 Ashgrove Court, Sykesville, Maryland, 21784. And it's true, if I call you Sylvia, you won't respond. <laughs> I will, but I'll take a second. Yeah. And you are currently the licensee in connection with this location, correct? Yes. And you've had a chance to meet the incoming licensees, and you've agreed to continue to serve as the resident licensee? Yes. And you understand that should a violation occur, and unfortunately you've been here before in connection with that, um, you understand that this board can hold you responsible for that violation? I do. And you've had a chance to familiarize yourself. I know you know the store manager. Um, and um, you actually had children that worked here, right? Oh, I had one of my kids was one of the original, yeah. Both my kids worked at the stores when they were younger. They're now adults. <laughs> and you've had a chance to meet the incoming proposed licensees. And you've had a chance to review their policies regarding um, how seriously they take the sale of alcoholic beverages. And are you confident that they will run this establishment um, in accordance with the, quite frankly, the history and the reputation of the other two applicant of the other two applicants, and not allow a violation to occur? Uh, yeah, I strongly suggested that I wanted to make sure they were. <laughs> and um, just like the other two applicants, we filed an application with this board on your behalf, and I've made proffers to the board today. Are all of the representations and proffers that I made regarding 
you to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief, true and accurate as you appear before the board today. Yes, they are. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, I would have no further questions of this witness. Questions of uh, Ms. Knorr? Uh, how much time do you spend at the store, at the facility? <laughs> um, I live in the area, so I've been known to come in for dinner every once in a while, and my kids still go in there and go for dinner when they're in town. So I, I, you know, when I have a chance, if I'm around, I jump in and go in for a meal. Different times, different days, whenever. Do you have any uh, responsibilities in the store? I do not. But we have provided her um, with contact information. And so if anything occurs, she's got my cell phone number for one thing. And unfortunately, my cell phone is always on. Um, and she knows if she sees anything. And it doesn't have to be a violation. It just has to be something that she doesn't like. She reaches out to us, and we'll immediately address the issue. And who is your store manager right now? And um, well, I, I, it's for the chairman to bring on next witness. Uh, but um, my question is to uh, Ms. Noor. What is your manager's name, current manager? Deletta, correct? Sorry, I say it wrong, but it's Deletta. Deletta? I'm. Deletta? Deletta. Her, her full name. To be honest with you, I mean, I only know her as Deletta. Oh, so. yeah. Just give her first and last name. That's. Deletta. Deletta Graham. Deletta Graham. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Thanks. I'm, I'm sorry to complicate things. <laughs> no, that's no, quite I, all right. Ms. Noor, how, how long have you been on this license? Uh, since they opened, which is how many years now? 12? Uh, 11 years. Yeah, 11 years, yeah. Has there been any minor violations? They've had two. Over, over the 11 years? Oh, yeah. When was the last one, do you recall? <sighs> yeah, I would say it was about three years ago, yeah. Four years ago now. Any questions, Ms. Knorr? No. You may call your next witness. Thank you. Deletta. Hi. You please state your full name and address for the record. Plus, please spell your name. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Okay, it is Deletta. That's D-E-L-E-T-T-A. Last name Graham. I live at 2401 Bytham Court, Unit 103, and that's in Windsor Mill, 21244. Thank you. And you are the general manager of this location? Yes, I am. And how many hours a week do you spend there? <laughs> uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> of, of 55 to 60 hours a week. And this is your full-time occupation? Yes, it and is. I would take it with 50 to 5 to 60 hours a week. You don't have any other jobs for which you get paid? I do not. <laughs> and how long have you been with Glory Days? I've been with Glory Days two in almost two and a half years. I started off at Ruby Tuesday. I've been in the hospitality um, environment since I was 16 in college, working at Ryan Steakhouse in South Carolina. From there, I went into college, finished my degree in biology but end up still working in customer service because I love people. So I am in the hospitality business forever until I'm ready to leave. Um, but Glory Days has been my occupation for the last two and a half years. And um, do you have regular communications with your upscale chain of command? I do. Uh, Dave Cohn is my district manager. Um, I do have his uh, local contact number. Um, Vivid cell phone um, and email. So if there's any information that is needed, I do reach out to my higher up or authorities um, from Kenny to Dave when questions. And other than um, some personnel changes upstream, have there been any changes at this particular location? No. And there are none intended, correct? No. Except um, continued enforcement and enhancement of alcoholic beverage laws? Correct. And have you ever personally been involved in any violate in any incident that gave rise to a violation regarding the sale or control of alcohol? Not damage? at this time, no. Yeah. And while you've been the manager of this unit, it has not had any violations. No violations. And uh, the, the policy is pretty hard. So if you have if you have two employees that that do what they're not supposed to do, you lose your job. I do lose my job, and I'm not willing to lose my job. <laughs> and so you have you on a very regular basis meet with your staff to yes. remind them of the importance of not serving to alcohol, uh, not serving alcohol to people that are underage or intoxicated. Absolutely. Every day we do pre-shifts. So and that pre-shift includes meeting about 
underage selling of alcohol or making sure that we verify ID and that we do not sell to minors. And the board is got two, at least two areas of concern. One regards the use of verticals and right. one regards the signage throughout your store. Could you please address both of those issues? Yes, we do not accept vertical IDs. Um, if one is present at the time of a customer or guest set for alcohol purchase, um, my server or bartenders will include a manager to come to the table to inform that guest that we no longer, oh, well, we do not accept vertical IDs. And can you please address the signage throughout your store, um, there both, both in terms of what the customer sees and what your staff sees? So my staff sees it. Uh, we have back of house information that talks about alcohol selling. Um, the bartenders have information that they can read at their areas of usage that shows that we do not sell uh, certain IDs for purchase of alcohol. Mr. Chairman, I would have no further questions of the witness. There are two things, uh, two major things that uh, this board is uh, not happy with. One is the sale of minor, and the second thing is we get reports from all of the police agencies in regards to EWN and DUIs. What's the policy of your serving alcoholic drinks? to patrons? When do you cut them off and how do you know to cut them off? So we talk with our servers and bartenders about um, noticing if a guest is over the limit. Um, if they are not comfortable selling more, then they have to bring a manager to that. And from that, we go and observe the guests um, just to see where they are and how they feel. And if they're under the influence of where we're not comfortable, we call Uber or Spry Share where we can take them and leave, get them home. So we will um, talk to those who may be sitting with that guest and see who is driving. And if we're comfortable to release, then we will. If not, then we will call state police um, and let them know that we have an underage person, or not underage, I'm sorry, a person that is under the influence and we're not comfortable with them driving. I know you have regular customers and, and your employees uh, get to know them and their actions and so forth, but mm -hmm. what happens if I come in that bar and I order three shots of whiskey in about a half hour? Um, we stop. Um, we offer them food. Um, we speak with the guests um, just to get them back under control. Are you okay? Let's get you some water. Um, let's slow down your count. If we see that they're still ordering my bartenders, I will tell them to stop the alcohol selling to that guest. There was some testimony earlier about tips and TAM training. Can, can you go into that further? Uh, is it mandatory for your servers? How often do you have it? If you have it, do you have in-house training on alcohol management, those type of things? Yeah, so we do tips training um, for all servers and bartenders. Okay. Um, we offer it at the time that they are higher. We will set up a course with our, our trainer, Sarah, and she will present it in every store where she will come in and tips train those who are servers and bartenders over the age that are allowed to serve alcohol. I'm sorry, did you say you had a dedicated person who yes. is tips and, or TAM trained? Correct. Right. Yeah, certified trainer. Certified Correct. trainer. Are you uh, tips or TAM trained? I am. That's a very good policy, by, by the way. Um, in the two and a half years that you've been at Glory Days, how many times have you been called over by a server to discuss a vertical license or uh, over service? Um, in the time I've been with Glory Days, probably two to three times I've been called to a table with vertical license um, or someone that they're unsure if their license is valid or not. Okay. Yep. That's the only questions I have, Mr. Chairman. I have any questions? We don't have any further questions at this time of this witness. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Y'all can go sit down, please. Oh, M Mr. Chairman, with the board's permission, may the resident licensee be excused? She needs to get back to work, or needs to go to work. <laughs> to work if that's okay, unless you need me for any further questions. We have no further questions. No questions. No further questions. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. Have a safe day. Yeah, thank you. Gentlemen, y'all would come up. Don't be bashful. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you're here. I don't want you to feel neglected, <coughs> so. You're not testifying. <coughs> oh, 
come on up. Come join our party. Don't want to make you have come here for nothing. Sir, please state your name and address for the record. Robert Garner. I live at 1627 Carnoustie Drive, Pasadena, Maryland. And, sir, in spite of your shirt, mm -hmm. you no longer work for Glory Days. Well, I no longer own it. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, just as of, you know, December, November time period, we started the transaction. And you are the outgoing licensee? Yes, I am. And, Mr. Chairman, other than that, I have no questions of the witness. You have questions? Yeah. Um, the incoming licensees, the applicants, how well do you know them? Oh, I know them uh, quite well. Uh, there's a relationship between um, the other licensee, Richard Danker, and his brother, Bob Basham. Richard staying with the company and being a part of the new entity, Playball USA. So uh, I've known Bob Basham for many, many years, 30 years or so. And, um, and I've known Jesse now for ever since he started with, uh, he was a franchisee of ours. Yeah, he was a franchisee of ours. And he, w he operated the franchise in Florida. So I've known him for a long time as well. And you also know Kenny because Kenny. Kenny's been up here well for, for over a year. He's been with, the, he, he came in and kind of embedded with our, with our team prior to the sale. And, and so he's been, you know, really uh, ready to be able to make the transition fluid. And that was his role. And now he's leading the team. Okay. And I, um, I bet you will confirm that they're fit and proper people to be on a oh, absolutely. license in Carroll County. Yeah, absolutely. For the record, I just wanted to. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I thought Kenny was sitting right there. Right there. Like, I know, you kept pointing to Kenny and he's he was back sitting. there. He was. Okay. So were you the uh, original owner of the franchise in Eldersburg 10, 11 years ago? Yeah, I'm the founder of the of Glory Days. Glory Days. And and we opened Eldersburg as one of the restaurants in 2011. So you're retired from the food business? 46 years and I'm re I'm retired but that doesn't mean I'm finished. I mean, I'll be doing some things in the future, not necessarily in the restaurant business. By the way, Carroll County um South Carroll County, where I live, was very happy to see Glory Days pop up mm. back in that, those days. Yeah, thank you. It was a nice amenity, a nice addition to the community. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you very thank much, you. sir, and good luck in your semi-retirement, I'm going to say. Thank you. Well, he's got four grandchildren living with him right now, oh, yeah, so. so. <laughs> he's not retired, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, for Drive sure. Right here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> and consider what <coughs> two and a half of them are teenagers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sir, please state your name and address for the record. My name is Douglas Mortaya. I live at 2810 Elsa Court, Crofton, Maryland. And, Douglas, um, why are you here today? Uh, I was a character witness for Jesse McPherson and Kenny Russo. And how long have you known them? I've met them in 2006 when I worked for Crab's Italian Grill. And do you believe them to be fit and proper people to serve on an alcoholic beverage license? Yes, I do. And do you know of any reason why this board should not approve them as such? I do not. Mr. Chairman, I would have no further questions of the witness. Questions? Uh, I didn't quite hear. How, how do you know the um, applicants? I started working for Carab's Italian Grill in 2006. Oh, okay. In what capacity were you working there? I was a managing partner for the um, store in Waldorf, Maryland. Rob's is Pepsi. Excuse me? Darden. Rob's is Pepsi. Oh, no. no it's, it's Blooming, so Blooming, Blooming, Blooming Brands. Brands. Blooming Brands. Used to be Outback Steakhouse Incorporated, then it became Blooming Brands. I have no further questions. No questions. Thank you, sir. Next witness. Sir, your name and address for the record, please. My name is David Cohn. Address is 67 Yarra Way, Hanover, Pennsylvania. And, sir, why are you here today? Uh, my title is Director of Operations. I directly supervise Deletta and I report to Kenny. And how long have you been in the hospitality industry? Uh, hospitality industry about 30 years and 21 years with Glory Days. And um, do you know um, Kenny Russo and Jesse McPherson? Yes, I do. And how long have you known them? About a year and a half. And do you believe them to be fit and proper people to serve on an alcoholic beverage license? Yes, I do. 
Um, going back to your relationship with this particular unit in, in Eldersburg, um, how frequently do you have communications with Deletta? Every day. And <laughs> she's got you on speed dial? Uh, yes, and I have her on speed dial. And if there are any problems whatsoever, you'll make sure that they get resolved? Absolutely. And you've heard us made a number of proffers here to the board today regarding this particular unit. Do you believe all those proffers regarding the unit and all the proffers regarding the fitness of the witness of the applicants are true and correct? Yes, I do. And Mr. Chairman, I would have no further questions of the witness. I have no further questions. Any all right, questions? I have a question. Uh, how do you spell your last name? Oh, sorry, it's <laughs> K-O-H-N. You gave your address as Hanover? Hanover, Pennsylvania. I guess we'll have Hoots potato chips available in glory days. <laughs> I'll bring them next time. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. All right, uh, you're, ch Mr. Chairman, you didn't accept the package of exhibits that she gave it. Uh, you didn't accept that. Did you uh, number them? Yes, I did. I, I put them all as exhibit one. Okay, we'll accept those in evidence, okay. which we've already seen. Yes. <clears throat> Dr. Benford, do you have any comments this time? Um, every time I've dealt with Glory Days, it's been very proper. Um, there are two violations, just to put it on the record, 2018 it had a violation, and 2015 it had a violation underage sales to a minor. There are no other questions. Testimony is now closed and evidence presented, and we will now go into closing statements. Ms. Linda, if you would like to make a closing statement. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Again, thank you for your time and consideration, This not only today, but just in allowing me to come before you in December, I guess. Um, it, it made our life a lot easier. We've worked very hard to um, dot all the I's and cross all the T's. I will follow up with permits today. And we would respectfully request that the board approve the transfer of this application to Playball Maryland Eldersburg LLC and the three licensees, or the three applicants to become licensees, Sylvia Michelle Knorr, Kenny Robert Russo, and Jesse Stephen McPherson, uh, subject obviously to the permits department signing off. Director Benfer, any closing comments? I do not have any. If not, testimony evidence is now closed, and this board will decide the merits of the application and render a decision. Well, Mr. Chairman, um, I'll start uh, the discussion. I, I think it's abundantly clear that the applicants are fit and proper people to be on the license. Uh, the applicants and the staff and all the witnesses who have testified are certainly very highly experienced and uh, I, I don't think this board has any qualms about how the restaurant is run. It's run very well, always has been, and we expect it always will be. Uh, and I don't think there's going to be any changes that would be, be a concern to us. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the alcohol management package that Council has provided us very impressive, and we appreciate the efforts that you do uh, to make sure that there's not over service, nor is there service of someone who is underage. So thank you for that. Uh, I am also glad that your servers know that it, it can be a, a criminal prosecution when they serve someone who's underage. I think that's important. We have a diversionary program in this county now where if someone does serve someone underage, it gets referred to the state's attorney's office and the uh, server can go through a program and avoid prosecution. So it's important for servers to know that, I think. And, uh, and I'm, I'm glad that you have your servers know that. Those are my remarks at this point. I'd be interested to hear uh, any comments. I agree with everything that Commissioner Barnhart said. I would add that I commend them for what appears to be a great manager. She seems very adamant about making sure that, you know, what needs to be done is done correctly. And, and I do commend you for that. So. Thank you. I'm prepared to make a motion, Mr. Chairman, if it's I would be happy proper. to hear one. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that in the case number 6425 that the application 
Excuse me. Six four three two. Uh, what am I looking at? Oh, I'm sorry. I I have the wrong docket. Mr. Chairman, I move it in case six four three two, which is an application for the transfer of a Class B C beer, wine, and liquor license to a new corporate ent entity. I move that that portion uh, of this hearing be approved. Uh, I also move that the three applicants, uh, Sylvia Noor, Kenny Russo, and Jesse McPherson, uh, to be on the liquor license for the, um, uh, for the transfer. I move that their application be approved. Subject to, as Council said, inspections and permits being granted and received. There's a second to the motion. I second that motion. Motion's been properly made and seconded that in the application of case 6432, we're transfer of a Class BC beer, wine, and liquor license with catering to a new corporate entity and a change of licensees to be issued to Sylvie M. Gnor, Kenny R. Russo, and Jesse S. McPherson for the use of Playball Maryland Eldersburg LLC trading as Glory Days Grill, 1348 Liberty Road, Eldersburg, Maryland, 21784, be approved. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those no. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great and safe day. <laughs> and to you ladies, happy Valentine's Day in advance, since I don't think you'll be here on the 14th. And to the gentleman, too. Yes. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> my sister came, she's my next door neighbor, and she came to my house yesterday and said, I have a Valentine's Day present for you, because if I don't give it to you now, you won't be able to use it. <laughs> Council, you did a great job. Thank you so much. We try. And I have a phenomenal staff, as uh, Joe, you've had the opportunity to experience. You need help with that? Oh, I'm good, thank you. And y'all have to know, Joe Vance is amazing. He's a good baker, too. Second. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I second that. <laughs> yeah, we need to say, don't forget Keith. Oh, yeah. Listen, during COVID, when we had to do all those, you know, online everything, I'd send him something. I swear, I hadn't hit the scent when I get the response, and it's like, do you have this on automatic pilot? Because it's like boom, boom, boom. Yes, your, your inspector is amazing as well. He's not very busy, so he just sits there and stares at the email every day. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have a great and safe Thank you again. Okay, at this time, I would ask our esteemed attorney, Mr. Dixon, to call case 6433, please. All right, case 6433, an application to replace resident licensee John Sarah Sr. with James W. Sarah on a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to James W. Sarah for the use of JRJ LLC trading as Raphael's, 32 West Main Street, Westminster, Maryland, 21157 in Election District 7. And to file this matter, we have the following documents. A, January 27th, 2023, notice of public hearing for this case. A, January 20th, 2023, notice of public hearing for this case. A, January 4th, 2023, letter from Joe Vance to James W. Sarah. A, December 21st, 2022, letter from Kelly S. Miller to the board. And then there is an application, and the application includes character references, operating agreement, ownership information, criminal background information, MVA information. I would ask that the file be entered into evidence. We'll accept that into evidence. This time I would ask all those who intend to testify to please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in by Ms. Vance. That Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. You may be seated. With that, Ms. Kelly, good morning. 
Thank you. Good morning. Kelly Schaefer Miller, M I L L E R, 73 East Main Street, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. Welcome to our, some new faces that I see sitting up here. It's been a few months since I've been here. Um, as Mr. Dixon introduced, I am here on behalf of JRJ LLC, trading as Raphael's. I have with me Mr. Jamie Sarah, seated uh, to my left, James Sarah being his legal name. I will put that out there right away. Um, we are here, unfortunately, because Jamie's father, who was the license holder, has passed. And so um, as a result of that, we have taken a look at the corporate structuring and um, now Jamie has applied to kind of fill that role uh, that his father held previously. So you will hear in the testimony that Jamie and his brother John now are part, have, have assumed their father's interest in the LLC. Um, and you will also hear through Jamie's testimony that there are no other changes to the establishment as a result of this. The business is remaining the same. Everything that you last heard as part of the most recent hearing on this, everything remains the same. Um, this is purely just a change of licensee. So with that, I will call James Sarah. Jamie, can you please state your name, spelling your last name and address for the record? Uh, <clears throat> James Sarah. S-E-R-R-A, uh, address 742 Central Avenue, Sykesville, Maryland, 21784. And for purposes of this hearing, I'll call you Jamie, or you That's know right. as Jamie. Okay. Yes. Uh, Jamie, have you applied here today to transfer an existing Class B beer, wine, and liquor license? Yes. Okay. And in doing so, was my opening statement accurate that you will be replacing your father who has deceased? Yes. Okay. And... Do you have experience in the restaurant industry? Yes, since 1997. Can you just briefly describe that to the board? Uh, we opened our first restaurant in Sykesville back in 97, my brother and I, and then we've expanded with other restaurants um, through the years. So we still run and operate our original location in Eldersburg. And what is that, Jamie? Uh, Sarah Brothers Italian Deli and Sports Bar. And are you currently also on that license as well? Yes, okay. currently been on since 97. Okay. And that 97 being the beginning of that business? The beginning correct? of that business, yes. Okay. And is that also a Class B license? Yes. Okay. And you, you heard me say this in my introduction, but is it accurate that this application today has been filed under the entity name JRJ LLC? Yes. Okay. And are you a member of that entity? Yes. What percentage of ownership interest do you hold in that entity? Uh, 33 and a third percent. Okay. And did you acquire that ownership as a result of your father's passing? Mm, yes. Okay. Um, who are the other members of the entity? Uh, my brother, John Sarah Jr., and my other uh, partner, Raphael Javier. Okay. And do you each <clears throat> now as a result of your father passing and you and your brother assuming his ownership interest, is it now equal percent ownership interest between the three of you? Yes. So in summary, Rafael Javier's ownership interest did not shift, but what happened was your father's ownership interest was split evenly between you and your brother. Yes. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Now, is it, you understand that although this application has been submitted for an LLC, that you personally are responsible for this license, for appearing in front of this board, and for any communications related to this liquor license, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And what will your role in this business be? Uh, just overseeing with Raphael, you know, the day-to-day, -day, you know, um, being there for him if he's got any questions and just, you know, over. He runs day to day and then I just oversee and assist him with the operations of the restaurant. And you also, is it also accurate just to, it's, it's been several years, so we'll remind the board. Is it also accurate that you own, your family owns the building in which Raphael's is located too? Yeah, we own the building also. And will this, will your role in the business be similar and akin to what your father's role in the business was when he was also the license holder? Yeah, same capacity. 
Now, again, I said it in my opening, but I want to hear you testify to it. Uh, are there any other proposed changes to the business as a result of this transfer? No, no changes. So floor plan stays the same, general business operation, training well, of employees, everything stays the same. Everything correct? stays the same, yeah. Okay. And are you familiar with the Carroll County uh, rules and regulations of this board? Yes. Okay. Are you willing to comply with those rules and regulations? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Those are my only questions of Jamie, Sarah. Questions to Mr. Sarah. Um, first, I'd like to extend the board's condolences to the loss of your father, Mr. Sarah. Um, how much time do you plan to spend at the Raphael's entity? Uh, I mean, it's, it varies. It depends on what Raphael needs from me. I mean, we go over the books, you know, it's just, you know, with, I don't do day-to-day -day operations with him, but like I oversee, we meet every probably once a week, I know, and then if, you know, if I need to be there for whatever he needs, you know, and then I'm also the landlord of the building, so I do spend time there in and out, you know, of the, of the actual property, so. I mean, I have other business entities that I've run on day-to-day -day operations, and this is just another one that we have, so. And I see, looks like your other entity has not had a violation since 2016. Looks like sounds record. about correct, yeah. Um, that's good for the longevity. Yeah, my brother, he's, he's there day-to-day -day at that okay. entity, and then I'm partners with him. Like, him and I own that together since 97 we've been there since that that long and you have a no vertical license acceptance at both yes entities? yeah the only questions i have so um mr sarah again um condolences on passing your father mm. um you're not involved in the day-to-day -day at sarah brothers in eldersburg your, your other brother is my brother is day-to-day -day with his his son and my brother run that now day to day okay. i was there for 20 some years day to day that was like the original my brother was at um we had another location in in Howard county for quite a few years and then my brother came back to this location and then he's been part of raphael's also so we we kind of oversee that you know together okay um and the date of your father's passing is what uh, August 27th, I think, was the actual date. Put me on the spot there. <laughs> Those are the only questions I have, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. So basically, all we're doing is replacing your father with, with you. The operation will continue basically just the same as it was with your overseeing instead of your dad's. Yes, correct. Any other questions? Any other questions? No. Ms. Kelly, you may proceed. Thank you. I would next call, I brought two character witnesses, so I think it makes sense for both of you just to come up at the same time, and if you could just sit in front of these microphones. Um, keep in mind that everything here is being recorded, so it's important that you speak into the microphone when you answer the question so that it can, it can hear you. Okay, so I'll start with Danielle. Danielle, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and your address for the record? Danielle Ban, B-E-A-G-H-A-N, and it's 2203 Fridinger Mill Road, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. Danielle, how long have you known Jamie? Probably about 30 years. Okay, and, and how do you know Jamie? He was a customer first. And then I was a customer of his at the restaurant, and now I work for him full time. Okay. So have you had enough experience with Jamie to determine whether you believe he's a fit and responsible person to hold a liquor license? I'd say yes. Okay. Yeah. And do you believe that he's an honest and reliable person? Yes. Okay. Those are my only questions of Ms. Danielle. Questions? I have no questions. I would next call Brian Lindstrom. Brian, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and address for the record? Uh, Brian Lindstrom, L-I-N-D-S-T-R-O-M, 2038 Stillwater Road, Eldersburg, Maryland, 21784. 
Brian, approximately how long have you known Jamie Sarah? Over 10 years. Okay. And how do you know Jamie? I've worked for him for 10 years, and I knew him. My father had a motorcycle shop, and he used to come in. Okay. And do you find Jamie to be a fit and responsible person to hold a liquor license? Absolutely. Do you find him to be an honest and reliable character? Absolutely. Those are my only questions of Mr. Bryan. Questions? Uh, what motorcycle shop? It was CNL Cycle, Honda, in Eldersburg. Remember Jack Lauderback? That's what yes, he, my father bought it from Jack. Yeah. My father got dementia towards the end, and it, it was a mess. Uh, Jack Lauderback was a family friend, and uh, I'm, I'm familiar with CNL Cycle. So. Yep, he bought it from Jack. That's the only question I have. <laughs> you have any questions? I don't, know. I don't have any questions. That concludes my testimony in this case. Thank you. Dr. Benford, do you have any comments to make? Um, only comment is I've seen Jamie several times, not, not often down at Sarah Brothers, but I do every time I've dealt with him, he's been honest and true. So I think he'd be fit and proper to hold a liquor license. No other questions? Evidence is. I have, I'm sorry. I just I wanted to um, to ask uh, Attorney Miller. Um, so some of the documents in our file are unexecuted, unsigned, unwitnessed, undated, things like that. Um, I, I'm assuming that you'll be able to get those for us, put them in the file to to support the application because the application references them. Yes, absolutely. That I actually have fully executed copies now. I just didn't when I submitted the application. Oftentimes the corporate documents are drafted and then upon a successful conclusion of this hearing, then they're all executed. So I have them and it, my, my ordinary practice is then after the hearing to submit them right. to Joe for the file. So yes, I will make sure that those get added to the file. Thank okay. you. Okay, along those lines, the other question I had was the, um, the ownership interests. Mm -hmm. um, Going back to the most recent reapplication by Raphael's, the ownership interest is described as 50 50 between John Sarah Sr. and Raphael. Now we're being told it's 30 30 30, and that the, the sons inherited their father's portion, but our files reflect that the father had 50%. Can you tell me what you're looking at? Mr. Barnhart, because I took a look at the old JRJ LLC operating agreement, and that had um, John Sarah Sr. listed as 66.66% ownership interest, yeah, and would. Raphael as 33.33. So that's how we, through the corporate restructuring and the um, estate of John Sarah, divided that. Okay. But I can maybe. There was the application for renewal of February 8th, 2022. Okay. Submitted that by. may have that may have been an error. I can take a look into that. So, but the accurate operating agreement ownership interest that is reflected in your um, original file for the Raphael's license listed John Sarah Senior as sixty six point six six percent and Raphael Javier as thirty three point three three. So that's then that that sixty six point six six was then divided evenly between his two sons, yeah. Jamie and John. So So I remember that was how it originally was. Mm -hmm. But then the, the last time I looked at it Javier, Rafael Javier got 50%, and that's the information that was given to us at, at the uh, hearing a couple of years ago. So okay. uh, it's, it's, I don't think it's a critical issue for us. I just, it's a bookkeeping issue more than No, else. I appreciate you bringing that up, and I will take a look at it, because I do not recall it, it changing to 50-50, but if it does, then we will need to also amend that as well so, and, and submit and supplemental I'm, I'm corporate wrong. documents. I, yeah. So I will take a look back through that and just verify and make sure that the corporate documents that get submitted are accurate. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, with that, evidence uh, as, pre as presented is now closed, and if there are any final comments... Ms. Kelly? Just very briefly, we appreciate being here in front of you today. Um, I think you've, uh, it, 
it's been a brief hearing. Um, Jamie Sarah is an existing license holder, but I felt, I mean, the rules require, and we felt it was appropriate that because his last license was obtained in 1997, that updated documents, you know, updating driving record, updated background check, all of that be submitted as part of this request. Um, also, back in 1997, there was no allowance to hold multiple Class B licenses, so and now there is, so that allows for uh, Jamie to remain on Sarah Brothers, which he was is still involved in, but also hold this license. So I think the testimony you've heard, heard back in 1997, although perhaps not the same faces, um, and now heard again today, is that Jamie was and remains a fit and reliable person to hold a license. So I would request that this board today grant the request for transfer. Thank you. Thank you. Any closing remarks, Inspector? None. Hearing none, testimony and evidence is now closed. And this board will deliberate the case and render a decision. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I endorse all the comments that um, Ms. Miller has offered to, to us. Uh, in my opinion, uh, Mr. Sarah is clearly a fit and proper person to be on the license and to step into the shoes of his father. Uh, so I would support the, um, the transfer. And, Comments. I agree with Commissioner Barnhart. Um, as always, Kelly has given us an eloquent presentation. So everything that we need to know is put right out on the table. Um, and if it uh, pleases the chairman, I'd be ready to make a motion. Yes, ma'am. I would motion to approve the application to replace the resident licensee. Um, John Sarah Sr. with John W. Sarah on the Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. James. James sorry. James, James. James, I'm sorry. There's a lot of J's. James <laughs> W. Sarah, my mistake. <laughs> um, I probably should add pending supporting signed documents being received and review and correction of the 2018 documents. It was the 22. Based document. on those, I would approve the transfer. I'll second that motion. Um, with the caveat that we're not sure that there right. needs to be a correction, but if there does, uh, I, I know that, that uh, Ms. Miller will take care of everything, as she always does, so I, I, I second the motion. Thank you. Motion has been properly made and seconded that we approve the application as presented with all articles completed and researched if necessary. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no, so ordered. Congratulations. In the case 6433, an application to replace resident license John Sarah Sr. with James W. Sarah on a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to James W. Sarah for the use of JRJ LLC <coughs> trading as Raphael's, 32 West Main Street, Westminster, Maryland, 21157 be approved. Congratulations. Thank Best you. Best wishes and continued success. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, we're taking a 10 minute break. We'll resume at 1120.
As soon as our inspector comes back, we will proceed. And in his absence, we'll do one part of our business meeting. You all got the minutes of the January 18th board meeting. Yes, sir. Is there any corrections or additions? I have none. Any questions? If none, then they are approved as presented. So at this time, I would ask our attorney, Mr. Dixon, to call case 6434, please. All right, case 6434, an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to Romero S. Coco for the use of Tony's Cafe, LLC, trading as Tony's Cafe, 520 East Baltimore Street, Suite 70, Tony Town, Maryland, 21787, in Election District 1. And to follow this matter, we have the following documents. <coughs> a notice of public hearing, January 27th, 2023. A notice of public hearing, January 20th, 2023. Joe Van sent a request to various state and local agencies uh, requesting uh, information. She got a response from Lisa Staley Health Department with the, and the box is checked the above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There is a response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Daryl Hale, Zoning and Code Enforcement Officer, City of Tonytown, and the box is checked the above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There's a response to Ms. Vance from Belinda Gassell, Collections Office, and the box is checked. The above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There's a January 4, 2023. Three letter from Joe Vance to uh, Miss India Phillips, Revenue Specialist, Comptroller of the Treasury. This is January 4, 2023 letter from Joe Vance to Mr. Ramiro Coco. And then there's an application and the application includes character references, MVA information, Criminal background information, corporate information, something insurance, it looks like. Workman's comp insurance. Workman's comp insurance, mm -hmm. operating agreement, SDAT information, ownership information. Oh, that's workers' comp. All right, workers' comp, floor plan, lease agreement, operating agreement, ownership information, and alcohol awareness certificate. And alcohol awareness certificate. I would ask that the file be entered into evidence. We'll accept that into evidence. At this time, I would ask all those who intend to testify. Please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in by Ms. Vance. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You may be seated. This is an application for a new license. Mr. Coco, would you uh, like to tell us what, why, and where you want? Uh, yes. Um, State your name and address for the record first, please. Uh, Romero Coca, uh, 533 uh, Daisy Drive in Tiny Town, Maryland, 21787. I apologize, my accent is a little bit strong. And, um, yeah, I did uh, buy uh, Miss Karen Tony's Cafe in Tony Town, and I would like to transfer um, her. Uh, license, liquor license to my name, uh, to be able to operate the bar site too. Go ahead. 
Do you currently operate that business? The business, yes. No alcohol. Okay. Um, and it's called Tony's Cafe? Yes. All right. The liquor license that attached to that store previously was in the name of Karen Labu? Yes. Billy? Yes. Do you know whether that license was ever surrendered or is it still active? Do you have any no, idea? No, it's still active. Um, it is. She, uh, She's on the way. She's running a couple minutes late. Uh, oh, she's going to be here? Yes, she's going to be here. In, okay. Yes. All right. I'm sorry for oh, the right. delay. So you're asking for a, a transfer of the license to yes. you? Yes. But you want to make it a new license to include beer, wine, and liquor? Um, she had the full license. She downgraded because she haven't used it for the last three years because of the pandemic. Um, but she had a, she still had a, the license, but she wasn't using it. We wasn't selling ago. I've been working there for 20 years. Um, I'm the chef. Oh, I see. So, so yeah, I saw in the file that she hadn't reported any alcohol sales yeah, for a had. while, and I was wondering if she had given up the license, or. but you say yeah. she still has the license. Yes. Um, the dining room being closed. All she been doing is the carry out. So she, it got to the point where she wanted to retire. And we still want to keep running the business because people work in there, so we want to keep them, you know, with their job. So you've been working there. Yes, for as over 20 years, since uh, 1999. Over 20 years as the yes. chef. Yes. Okay. And have you taken over the business already? I did. Okay. On the 1st of uh, January. All right, so that is complete. The sale has been made. Yes. The business is yes. transferred to you. Yes. And the only thing that you're lacking in your mind is the liquor license. Yes. Okay. It, it's not technically a transfer because since he wanted to go with beer, wine, to liquor. To add liquor, it's, yeah. It's new. I understand. Yeah. And there's no alcohol to transfer. Well, I mean, there's, there's no physical alcohol in the premises. Right. As far as transferring a license, uh, he's he's actually asking for a new license, a beer, wine, and liquor license, whereas Miss uh, Labu had a beer and wine license. Yeah. Okay. But for it to actually be a transfer, there has to be inventory to transfer, which is what Keith is. Okay. So you've been working there for roughly 20 years or longer? Yes, sir. How long has the alcohol license been in effect? Uh, I believe since 1999. So. What, what experience do you have serving alcohol and so forth? Uh, well, not serving alcohol, but I did talk some classes about uh, how to serve alcohol, and who to serve alcohol, and who not to serve alcohol. Yeah. When you say classes, you mean alcohol management training, for instance? Yes, yes. You've gone to the, a class, Yes. a TIPS or TAM mm -hmm. class? Yes, sir. And when did you do that? Um, I believe it was last month. Uh, I think it was on... It's in the file. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. I got a certificate. At this class, did they discuss vertical and horizontal licenses? Yes. Okay. If you were to get a license that you're applying for, would you have a policy regarding serving or selling to someone who had a vertical license? Uh, what I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Um, okay, that answers the question. Do uh, you know the difference? If the license looks like this, oh, will, yes, you serve, will you serve someone's license? Or you're not supposed to. I'm sorry, I, oh, so my accent is a little bit strong. <laughs> and I don't always speak well, so. <laughs> you did, perfect. So you're, you're saying that you would not serve a no, vertical? No, not, definitely not. Yeah. And my, my question was, is that something that you heard about in the class that you yes, took? Yes, yeah, we did, yeah. So you would have a policy of not serving definitely a vertical not. Yeah, license. I would put signs on the doors. And you say that Miss uh, La Bui or La Beau is going to come and. and yes, and she's, she she's was on the way, and uh, 
she should be here like I would say the most 10 minutes okay so you've had this the um, cafe since ja beginning of January January 1st it was pretty much a seamless transition because you were already there yes as, yeah, as pretty cook. Much the so same thing. all yes. the paperwork is done you have the ownership yes and do you uh, for the use of Tony's cafe LLC I see is on the application uh, who owns Tony's Cafe LLC? Um, I don't understand what that means. Okay. <coughs> um, I think in your application, to say that the applicant owns 50%? Oh, yes. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, my uh, brother-in-law, ah. uh, my sister husband, we both, I didn't have the whole money, so we sat down and talking. He decided to put the 50%. Okay. So we are. Um, so Ramira Coca, which is you. Yes. You own fifty percent of the LLC. Yes, sir. But you do you own one hundred percent of the business or just fifty percent of the business? Fifty percent. Okay. <coughs> so the business is owned by theoretically LLC. Yes. So Jose Suerto is your brother-in-law? Yes. Is he involved with the business at all, uh, the cafe? Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, he's doing the financial situation, like to pay the bills and uh, He calls. keeps the books? Yes. He keeps Check the books, books yes. things like that? Yeah. And I do the kitchen part, the chef thing. Does the cafe have one floor or two floors? Uh, how, I would say two floors, the bar side and the dining room side. Yeah, I was a little confused by the, uh, <laughs> by the diagram. Um, yes. Just one floor. It's oh, all okay. on one level. Yeah, one yeah. level, yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay, that's okay. Yeah, you walk in the middle, there's the carry out. To the right is the restaurant, sit down side. To the left is the bar, pool tables, bar, and there are some booths. Okay. Uh, and how many seats are at the bar? Um, I'm not specific on how many, uh, but I would say about 20 tables. Well, um, at the bar, uh, is it a bar where someone can yes. come it, up and get served a drink? Yes. So does the bar have any seats? Yes. Okay. So my question was, how many seats do you think are at the bar? Approximately. It's just, I'm just trying to get an idea. Uh, Miss Karen Labu. Okay. So sorry, I didn't know I needed to be here. That's all right. Ma'am, just stay, stay standing. Oh, I'm sorry. And be sworn in by Ms. Vance. You raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. State your name and address for the record, please. Karen R. Labu. 44 Bancroft Street, Tannytown, Maryland, 21787. Thank you. So, Ms. Labu, I've been asking some questions of the uh, applicant, um, Mr. Coca, and, and if I could just um, get, get a few questions to you uh, and to try to fill in some of the story here. Um, you are currently the license on, well, you're currently the licensee on the liquor license issued by Carroll County for that location? Yes, I probably should have called and canceled it or, or did something, but I didn't. Right, yeah, I, I noticed that you hadn't had any alcohol yeah, I'm sales. I'm so sorry. For, yeah, uh, but you're, the license is current and you're currently the licensee. At that location, mm -hmm. yeah. And the business is just in, isn't in existence anymore. Um, the cafe is not in existence? It is running and the lease was signed with uh, Mr. Coca uh, with the landlord Conawago. The landlord wasn't renewing my lease and because of it I had to I didn't know what to do so um, Romero and his uh, brother-in-law offered to buy the equipment and take it over as long as the landlord was good with it. 
Is the and landlord it, good with it? Yes, they've already signed the lease and everything was fine. Okay. And, and the transfer of the business has already occurred? Yes. And it's gone to settlement. It's, there's nothing left to be done. Mr. Um, Coco is the owner of the business? Yes. Okay. Is the business in operation right now? Yes, it is. Okay. So there's a kitchen up and running? There's a kitchen running and a dining room open. The bar has not had any alcohol or anything in it since the beginning of the pandemic. Right. That's what I understand. And, and, yes. there's, and there's no inventory to transfer? There's nothing there. Okay. And you've known uh, the applicant, Mr. Coco, for a long time? Well, probably 20, a little over 20 years. Uh, do you feel he's a fit and proper person and responsible person yes, and an honest is. person to have yes. and hold Yes, he license? is. Okay. Mr. Coca, have you had any experience with alcohol sales prior to this venture? And, and you were mostly chef, correct? Yes. So you were always kitchen manager per se. Kitchen. So have, did you have any experience out in the dining or the serving of alcohol no. at all? Do you have any previous experience in that? No. Okay. But you did take the class. You are yeah, and Tam certified. How many employees do you plan to employ? Um, I would say around between 10 and 12 employees. You have a separate bar person, bartender? Yes, uh, we waiting to uh, get the license first and then we're going to put a sign uh, or an ad that we need uh, new bartenders. And we got couple bartenders that they used to uh, serve in the bar in the past and we have very good uh, relationships so we want to maybe uh, talk to them if one of them want to come back. Are any of your other employees including these people that you're talking about certified by tips or TAMS to serve alcohol to your knowledge? I believe, yeah, generally. Um, Jennifer Keller is a employee that works at Fort Romero right now, and she has over the years tended bar, and I'm pretty sure she has taken a class for that, but I doubt uh, it's a three-year. Uh, four, four years. It's four years, okay. Um, I would say with the pandemic, everything that happened, there was, I'm sure she did not renew that. So there's nobody that will be initially employed that's got any experience with alcohol that's certified to serve alcohol? Not certified. Well, how about otherwise uh, experience? Otherwise, I own the business for 23 years, and I am at right now helping out at the shop, getting things straightened out with the computers and things, and I am there, and I'm available anytime he needs me. Okay. Um, so if I order in Manhattan, you know how to fix it? No, I would not. Bad news for you. I ain't going to order one of them either. <laughs> <laughs> would you plan on getting your staff tips or TAM certified once you got up and running with the liquor license? Make sure that there's yes. bartenders and servers? Yes. Um, Ms. LeBou, uh, um so the question was asked just before you came in, how many seats are at the actual bar? The bar itself has no seats at this Four point. Uh, we had 12 bar stools that went around the bar. Uh, so it can accommodate 12? It can accommodate what it historically 12. historically had was 12? Yes. Okay. But right now there's none? None.
when before COVID hit, what would your percentage of alcohol sales in relation to food sales been in the average year? I honestly don't remember, sir. I don't. I don't remember. I know over the years it had gone down. Um, we used to be open, you know, for entertainment um, and had DJs and things like that. Then the sales were the ratio was different. But the last couple of years before COVID hit, it definitely had gone down. So I'm not sure what that percentage was. But even when you uh, were closed and doing carryouts. Uh, you maintained your liquor license, even though you weren't doing any sales? Yes. Okay. And today, is that license current, or have you turned it in? I have not turned it in. Okay. If I can add, six years ago when I started being an inspector, they had a full bar, full beer, wine, liquor, and they had table service at, in the bar service um, two or three years in they started the sales were going down they started talking about clo closing early they were closing at 10 o'clock and then we switched over and then they, we switched over to a beer wine license for wow. them because the sales was not the bar area was not prof profitable for them did the food side also go down no during the pandemic our sales pretty much they were good they weren't that bad. Well, before the pandemic. Um, no, the carry out has always carried the restaurant. And I, is there a menu in here? I'll just ask, what kind of food do you uh, serve? We have, uh, we do subs, pasta, salads, pizza. Um, I had good burgers at one time. Yeah, we still have really good burgers. <laughs> oh, you don't have carry? Yeah, no, sit down, so. We've, yeah, we, we do have sit down in the dining room, just not the bar. Soups. It's been a while. I need to get and up there. soups, yeah. I need to get up there to see you guys. So how's the restaurant doing now? It's doing great. very good. Yeah. Yeah. And people being been asking for uh, alcohol. They're, you know, they're asking for alcohol. They're asking oh, well. for their beer. Yeah. They're still coming in and eating in the dining room, which is open, but right now we're not serving anything. There's no alcohol, there's no beer, there's nothing being served. But they do ask. But you're serving food in the dining room now. Yes. Yeah. What are your hours of operation? Uh, 11 to 8. In uh, Friday and Saturday, 11 to 9. You open Sunday? No, not right now. We, but we planning to in the future. So what's I might have missed this? How many servers, food servers, do you have now? Right now, just one or, or two. Some uh, sometimes the girl in the counter or the in, in the front help. In, uh, yeah, and I, I think you testified that neither have alcohol management training yet. Not yet. Uh, we before we uh, open up the we planning to bring uh, someone to train them. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I even talked to someone in uh, Westminster uh, already to planning to bring it in the dining room and sit down for the, I I believe it's three hours she say. So if you were to um, if this application were to be approved, would you plan on hiring more people? Yes. You think your business would pick up if, if you were able to serve? That's our plan to uh, bring it up and yeah. give more people jobs. Yeah. Do you want to say any other questions? If you were to get the license, I think your testimony is you would have your servers trained with alcohol management yeah. before you started serving alcohol. Yes, sir. Okay. That, uh, in my mind, is, is, is a, um, a good path forward, and uh, uh, I appreciate that.
I noticed that the application there, uh, unless I missed it, they need approval from the health department. Yeah. I thought that was approved. I thought the health department was yeah. one of the ones that, that did approve. That's in there. Yeah, there yeah but there's approved. other. There's something in there, and I wrote down health department. I thought. Yeah, I, I saw that too. It there might have been one, uh, an initial one that wasn't approved, but right. then the second one, yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah, Lisa almost always sends one. It's dated January 5th, 2022. She sends me two. She sends me initial one that they're not approved. And then when they are approved, she sends a second one. And we have a second. Yeah, yeah. The second Let me one see there. the final one. I can. There are outstanding. Uh, haven't heard back from the comptroller. And uh, permits is outstanding. So. The health department is that they've done their they've done their inspection. Yes. Okay. They're done. Okay. So, um, so, sir, you understand that there's a few more things that have to be yes. supplied and to us. We already make the appointment, except they are running a little behind because they uh, you have to make an appointment for right. them to come and do this job, like at the plumbery. Uh, like the whole department want us to cut the pipes that are going the drains too long, so we need. And so we wait on this person to uh, come yeah. next week and finish up. We may understand. Yes. <laughs> but that is a you know if everything going to be done yeah. Yeah. before we open. Okay. Well, before you start serving alcohol, you are open now, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I meant the yeah. bar side. Right. And um, other than you, Ms. LeBeau, are there any character witnesses? No. Any witnesses at all? Hello. Hi. I am from the city of Charlottetown. So are, you, are you Jay Mishi? I am. Uh, I, I, I remember you from uh, two hearings ago. And you'll see me I later that was you. again for that. Yeah. Uh, may I? Are you ready? Uh, Name Chairman. and address, please, sir. Sure. Jay Mishi, uh, 17 East Baltimore Street. Tawny Town, Maryland, 21787, that is City Hall. Um, I'm here today uh, on behalf of the government of Tawny Town to support Mr. Koka's application. Um, if it will help you at all visualize, um, the, the location is in a shopping center. When you walk in the front door, uh, you immediately see a, an, a carryout counter, a place you can order from. Then to your left, I'm doing this backwards, so if I, if I screw it up, please forgive me. But to your left is the bar area, um, which has a door to it. And then to your right is the dining room. Um, until pretty recently, uh, both of those doors had been closed uh, and it was running just carry out. Um, there was a time about maybe nine months ago um, when they started advertising for servers and bartenders. Um, I think with the intention to begin serving again. Um, but at that time, uh, it was when nobody could find any workers, frankly. Um, and we are aware uh, that uh, the landlord um, was, was ending his relationship with Miss, I've, I've never known your last name. What is it? Labu. Um, and we had some communications with the landlord and we were aware of the plan to transfer to who we just knew as the longtime chef. Um, but uh, uh, it was always, uh, well, I say always. I've been here since March 2021, um, and people have constantly been hoping and asking for the bar side to open up. Um, so we are enthusiastic and hopeful that you will grant this license. I think the criteria for a B license says um, that they're supposed to be granted in quantities for the convenience of the people. Uh, I think there's only one B license right now in Tawny Town, that's Cinco de Mayo. Um, but we have um, a lot of faith and enthusiasm. Um, as a person who has worked in bars for 20 years before I changed um, career fields, um, my estimate is based on the total number of tables there that you'd probably, if it were max capacity, be looking at six to eight servers. Um, the bar, I think, as Ms. LeBou said, uh, it's about, I would guess, eight 
um, stools wide, then maybe four along the one side. Um, it is, uh, I would describe it as being kind of a neighborhood place. Um, when I go there for lunch, uh, which is primarily for cheeseburger subs because their homemade bread is spectacular. Um, but uh, it, there is a robust carryout business. I don't think that it's going to become a circumstance where it's just a bar and nobody's buying food. It's very much the atmosphere and I think the extensive menu um, lend itself to a place where you go with your family, have a beer or a cocktail, probably not a Manhattan, um, with your meal. Um, so it's very much in keeping with the, um, with the culture and the atmosphere that we're trying to promote in Tawny Town. Um, and so I am at your disposal if you have further questions, um, but we do support this application. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have, um, do, you, do they get much foot traffic there? Um, it's not a ton of people walking directly there because it isn't a shopping center. Uh, there is a neighborhood called Fairground Village um, in proximity to the shopping center. So I'm not gonna say there's no foot traffic, um, but there's not, not the way that there would be at, you know, if it were downtown at the square. So you just recently met the applicant. Yeah, I'm not a character witness as such for his character. Okay. Can you spell your last name? Yeah, of course. It's M-E-A-S-H-E-Y. And, mm -hmm. and if anybody who knows me is watching this, they're probably laughing right now because typically I say, hi, my name's Mish. It rhymes with leash, which I should be kept on. <laughs> um, I, I have another question for you, mm -hmm. Mr. Mish. The um, Main Street Tawny Town, mm -hmm. that's in addition to your duties as um, economic director. What is Main Street Tawny Town? It's like you printed out my webpage or something. Main Street Tawny Town is um, an affiliate of Main Street America and Main Street Maryland. Um, a Main Street designation is awarded by the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, Main Street focuses on the walkable historic downtown of a place. Uh -huh. I think there are 28 Main Street communities in Maryland. Um, and there are four points that uh, Main Street focuses on. Organization, so that the organization itself is sustainable, gets new people in, fundraising design to make our downtowns more attractive, promotions to encourage shopping, and economic vitality. So looking at things like, oh my gosh, do we have enough parking? Do we need to give business loans? Things like that. Okay, great, thanks. Anything else I can do for anyone? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> do you have any comments, sir? Um, when Karen had the place, it was run well. Um, I think it's gonna be a asset for Tony Town to have beer, wine, and liquor. Um, I think his hours are gonna change down the road. Um, and I think if you can follow what she did, I think it'd be a good place to have in Tony Town. It's one of the few restaurants in Tony Town that actually has parking. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Labu, you, you, I think, testified earlier that you're going to um, not hang <coughs> around, but stay around a little bit and, and help yeah. transition. Yes. Um, it's always good to have the liquor board inspector say that you did a good job. Uh, so that will help the applicant. Then may manage? Technically, no. Okay. Unless you want to be a character witness or something like that. I was just going to say, as a former liquor license holder in Tawny Town and former resident of Tawny Town, I was a regular, at, a semi regular at Tony's. And um, I can attest to what Keith said the burgers, yes, very good. Um, and it, I never had an issue there. And we shared a lot of the same customers when I had Gunners. And I think that we, you know, Karen did a nice job. She used to host uh, the Tawny Town business meetings there for the Tawny Town Chamber of Commerce, and um, I remember Mr. Coco. So that's what I have to say. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, evidence is hereby closed. And if you'd like to make any final statements, now's the time to do it.
Dr. Benfer, any closing comments? None. Testimony is now closed, and this board will deliberate the merits of the application and render a decision. Well, Mr. Chairman, um, we do have testimony from the Economic Development Director for the Town of Tawny Town, also the manager of Main Street Tawny Town, that in his opinion, and he's speaking on behalf of the government of Tawny Town, in his opinion that, that this would be a good addition, be helpful to the economic development of the town, and he supports it. Um, the only problem that I see, and I think that you address this, and I think that you're going to take care of it, is that you haven't had training, I mean, I'm sorry, experience serving alcohol, although you've gone to the class and you have alcohol management training, but no one in your restaurant uh, presently has that training. Uh, my feeling is uh, if this board were to grant your application that that would be a condition and you've already testified that you would make it a condition before you began serving alcohol that your servers would have the appropriate tips or TAM training. Yes, sir. Uh, so, and I, and, and I believe you, so I, I don't think that that currently is an obstacle because I think you'll take care of that. Yes. And uh, plus you'll have the help of, uh, yes. of the former owner um, and uh, she um, uh, obviously is quite qualified to help you. Yeah. You've been there for 20 years. You know the place. Yes. You, uh, you apparently know the clientele too, I guess. Um, I have, you know, based on the file that you, there were character witnesses listed in the file, um, and the former owner, Ms. Labou, has testified to your character. She would know, and, uh, and I trust her judgment in that. So my feeling is that you are a fit, proper person to hold the license, you're responsible, you're honest, you've been there a long time. Um, so my inclination is to um, vote in favor of your application with the contingencies that you, know, you agree to get the training for your servers. And if there's any inspections or, or uh, permits that are required that you get them taken care of. Yes. Those are my thoughts, Mr. Chairman. All right. I, uh, I agree with everything Commissioner Barnhart said. I do feel that Ms. LeBeau will be right there with you to help you succeed going forward. Um, I think it's wise that you will get training for people and maybe even seek out some experienced staff that can help guide you through the alcohol serving um, situation that you're not familiar with yet. But I do agree that you appear to be a fit and proper person to hold a liquor license. With that said, uh, my comment simply would be that uh, your lack actually of experience in alcohol matters. Uh, I hope that you have proper guidance and don't be afraid to ask for guidance and questions as you gain experience. I think uh, the restaurant and the operation in the past years and so on and so forth has been an asset to the community and as you both testified, uh, it still is an asset and apparently the people that you serve in the city of Tawny Town appreciate all that you do to improve the atmosphere of Tawny Town and the traditions that have been there. So with that, the Chair would entertain a motion. Um, um, Mr. Chairman, I move in the case number 6434 which is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, liquor license to be issued to Romero Escoca for the use of Tony's Cafe, LLC. I move that that application be granted, conditioned on the things that we mentioned earlier, that you have your staff trained before you begin serving alcohol. Yes. 
and conditional on getting any permits that are required by the town or the county. Is that it? That's it. Is there a second? I second that motion. Motion's been properly made and seconded that this board approve an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to Ramiro Escoca for the use of Tony's Cafe LLC. Trading as Tony's Cafe, 520 East Baltimore Street, Suite 70, Tony Town, Merrill. Is there any further discussion on the motion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So ordered. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Best wishes, and do not hesitate to call on our staff. And Mr. Bo, I hope that you will keep guiding him on the right path. And thank you very much for all your work and hard work while you were thank you. the owner and operator of the establishment. Good luck to you. Thank you all very much. Good luck. Thank you. With that. You want to cover any of the business meeting or? <laughs> you got one inch away. Congratulations. One inch away. There, there's two things you could do now. All right. Into the business meeting. Are you there every day? Okay, great. We have a request from E.W. Bex to be able to participate in all those festivals in Sykesville like they usually do. Is there any objection? No. Request from the mine on Maine to have Sykesville Music Series evenings on Friday and Saturday through the spring and summer, which they have had the past, what, few years? Any objections? I guess that's the only two. Yeah, that, yeah, so that's, yeah, you're right. Everybody else, you have, everything else, you have to wait on the people right. to show up. Yeah. You ready now? <laughs> yeah. This meeting is adjourned until 2 p.m.